Hey everybody, this is Hercules Penix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Penix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to continue our sleeves to astonish. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't think of any other name uh, to talk about these um, records with uh, cartoonist um, covers. That was the best I could come up with. So this is Sleeves to Astonish Part 2. And hopefully that can wrap up all the 45s today I have and CDs with art by uh, cartoonists. As we can see right here, another, we left off with Brian Bolland last episode. And we're starting off with a beautiful classic 1985 Brian Bolland drawing of Judge Dredd, Mutants in Mega City One by the Fink Brothers. And this is uh, not like an official 2000 AD release but i don't know it's like completely they must have gotten permission and the faint brothers uh are kind of like it's a kind of like bad techno music this uh, record this 45 um but uh as we can see even the back cover a more beautiful bolland and uh god that's so good I can't remember this guy's name from uh, Judge Dredd. He might be one of the Fink brothers. I can't remember the, though, his name. But this is weird. It's got this whole like little mini play. Mutants in Mega City 1, Judge Dredd. What's up, Earthlets? Hysterical citizen. Mutants have entered the city. MCTV Newsflash. From their holes in cursed, cursed Earth, the mutants crossed the chem cloud burst. Nothing in their minds but hate. They're breaking down the city gates. Judge Thud, all citizens stay in your zone. Do not panic. The judges will protect you. Repeat, do not panic. Stay in your zones. So I guess, I don't know if these are the lyrics. I, From what I remember of this record, it was uh, just techno, like, with no vocals. Hmm. Let's see right here. Yeah, God, but look at that. That is so nice. I can't remember where I found this, but I was very happy when I did because I did not hear of it. Next, we have Super Snaz. And Estrus Records was doing these for a while, almost like Power Records. They were making their own 45 uh, with comic books. And at the back would be a little sleeve where they... 45 would go. I had the first one. I think it was the first one. And it's one of the few things over the years that I've lost. And I would kill to have it again. It was uh, one of these collections. I think in my shitty memory that was in full color. The inside. And it was the Makers, the Drags, and two other bands. And it was kind of like a beach party thing. Crazy thing. And I loved it. And I lost it. But at least I have this. And uh, this is some good stuff. All the art is by Alex Wald. Alex Wald is this weird figure who just keeps popping up. Almost like Forrest Gump in comics. Just coloring something here. To editing something here. Doing some cartooning. I should have looked him up. I just, I don't know. It's just, I keep seeing that name. But uh, this is some nice cartooning. He's really good. And I like this uh, homage to the Go-Go Checkers era of DC comics but they he really does it right like it's the DC logo but it's Estrus International the number of the record is you know on the cover just like a comic book I like this they have a letter letter page these are pretty funny people referring to imaginary comics in the series <laughs> I like this one uh the latest story that someone's commenting on was called, And a Pussy Shall Lead Them. A little kid drawing super snaz. Among Us, a traitor. Not an imaginary story. Man, they really get that Superman logo down perfect. Some good stuff. In darkest ale and Sapporo light, no evil shall escape our sight. Let those who worship the dull and mundane beware our powers, the super snaz dames. 
So they're interviewing a new member for Super SNES. But uh, then they get the emergency signal. They got to run off. And these uh, aliens that look like flies are uh, distributing this beer. Some kind of, yeah, it's a beer. I think Honey Dripper that's turning everyone into zombies. So Super Snaz come to save the day. And they're led by this queen, this alien queen. Queen Hachi. I like this, they're showing off their superpowers. The drummer has all these razor sharp symbols. She whips around, chops the guy's head off. The singer has the snaz scream. She's kind of like Black Canary. And uh, the bass player has fuzz, snaz, where she can make everyone get fuzzy and incapacitate them. The alien queen releases this giant robot gorilla to fight our heroines. But uh, they make short work of it. Yeah, I really like this Alex Wald. It's very simple. It almost looks like a Silver Age DC comic. And there's a happy ending. They make it to their show. And it looks like they're singing I Am A Cliche by the X-Ray Specs, which is on this record. We see Jimmy Olsen down there rocking out doing the jitterbug or whatever he does. Even the label's pretty nice on this record. Uh, just a great little production thing, you know? Oh, it says, plot and script, Dave T Todorello and Tim Paxton. And it looks like everything else is Alex Wald. Oh, it says here, Alex Wald is a former magician and quack artist whose art has appeared in Hustler, Highball, Monster International, the Paradox Press Big Book series, and many more. <laughs> He's also the inspiration behind Jack Kirby's Moon Boy, which I don't think is true, because he was a little boy probably when Moon Boy was made. Here we have a parody of those model ads. And, uh, I don't know if these are the woman from Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. I think they are. That would be, I'd like to see that world where there'd be models of uh, Russ Meyer characters. Oh, this is beautiful. As you can see, Chris Ware in his prime five style syncopated musings with a pungent guitar crunch. This does, I have a feeling Chris Ware doesn't like this music. It's like an indie rock band from the 90s. It's on Sub Pop Records. You know, like, I think Chris Ward just likes old-timey music. But who knows? Maybe he likes this. But I think it was just, you know, a commission. Oh, like, for all 45 RPM talking machines, it's got that old-timey Chris Ward f feel. We see Jimmy Corrigan. Oh, boy, a new phonograph record. Gosh, Mom, Thanks. Oh, I just love Chris Ware's just design work. So beautiful. And even does the back cover. Haha, <laughs> now my painful debilitating injuries don't seem quite so tragic, says little uh, Jimmy. They are from Chicago, this band, so that makes sense. You know, that's Chris Ware's hometown. I don't see a year on this. Oh, I think it's inside. Oh man, just all the tiny little print he does. Let's see if there's a date on here. 1994. Never heard of this band. But they have good taste in cover art. So uh, last time I showed uh, a Bob Log the third album drawn by a uh, the cover drawn by Chris Cajero Silla. And this is some of his earliest work. This is a long time ago. I think this is like the late 80s. Let's see. Uh, oh, early 90s. 
I believe this is the fell's first single, Space Girls. And, uh, you know, they're all two Sonin people. So they knew Chris Silla, Chris, back when he was just Chris Silla. And uh, got him to draw this amazing, great color drawing. <laughs> it's pretty, I love this stuff. And on the back cover, we get another alien for free. Yeah, the Fells were like a very garagey band, like with a capital G. This is a band I used to be in. I was, uh, they were another Tucson band, the Lowly Trojans. And uh, I was their biggest fan. I'd go to all their shows, sometimes even lug their equipment into the show, just because uh, I liked them so much. And then they needed a drummer when they moved to Chicago. And I became the drummer for a year or two, or three years. And uh, this is before I was in the band. But uh, once again, another Tucson band. Who do you call when you want a great record cover designed? Chris Cajero Silla. And uh, he did this amazing drawing for 10 Past 5, which is the name of the A side on here. We see this guy like fighting a clock to no avail. Man, that's a nice illustration. God, just drawing all the green on the wood of the bar. It's fun stuff. Nothing on the back. Okay. Oh, this is a nice one. Wolver Tunes. This was a very strange record. Um, Sympathy for the Record Industry put this out. And I guess they were making a lot of money in the 90s so they could indulge themselves with something like this. So this is a record of Basil Wolverton's, uh, some of his old radio show pieces. He had a radio show for years in uh, Oregon, I believe, or Washington. He lived in this, the Portland, whatever, Vancouver area. And it's just so weird. So it's a 3D 45, first of all. They got Ray Zone, the master of 3D, to do the 3D separations. And uh, yeah, these are probably just some old great drawings by Wolverton. And it's so silly, his radio show, he's just telling corny jokes and every now and then he plays his ukulele and sings these silly songs. Yeah, there's the uh, Ray Zone logo. Another beautiful Wally, I'm sorry, Basil Wolverton drawing. Sorry. Oh, and there's stuff inside too. I got the 3D glasses in here, they're very tiny. They're like made for a baby. So we have uh, an illustration on the on the label, and then we have pictures of Basil Wolverton. This is from his a home movie he made. These pictures, he made a home movie called Nuts for Nourishment in 1947. And that's from 73, from some local TV interview. Yeah, this is quite a weird little interesting curio. So uh, from Austin, Texas way comes The Inhalants. And uh, I don't know if I assume Jason Huerta may be from Austin and they got Jason Huerta to uh, do the cover art. Uh, Jason Huerta, I don't even know what he's been doing the past, I don't know, 15, 20 years, but in the 90s and noughts, he was in a few anthologies, did some cartooning. He was in that Cruel and Unusual Punishment anthology that Dennis Warden put out, which reminds me, I will I have to make a video for that. That was a great little anthology. But here's the three of them, Toronto really just surreal and Dada-esque and bizarre. Yeah, J Jason Huerta, it was kind of weird, had a weird drawing style. And he does the designs the back as well. So it looks like 94 this came out. Really good band, The Inhalants. Great garage band. One of the better ones. Oh, this is nice. So this is, uh, came out after Pink Floyd The Wall, the movie came out. Music from the film. 
the classic Gerald scarf uh, painting. Oh man, I love that. This is a nice little 45. It's, you know, it's got gatefold covers, pictures from the wall. And the record slips in here. Let me, uh, I can't remember if there's art on it. Well, it's that pink floor of the wall. This has When the Tigers Broke Free which is a song that was written for the movie. It's not on the album, Pink Floyd, The Wall. So it's kind of nice to have this if you're a big Pink Floyd, The Wall fan like I am. I grew up loving it. This was my like, you know, I guess today people would say, oh, sad kids listen to emo music. This was my emo. This was uh, when I was a depressed teenager. Pink Floyd, The Wall was like my friend. I <laughs> listened to it all the time and sympathize with the character and be like i know man life sucks i know how you feel pink okay this next one this is the last 45 we have now, as you can see there's no cartooning here why am i showing you this shrapnel combat love who cares what is this nothing to do with comics right but the reason i'm showing this is because when i was a little kid one of my favorite Marvel comics probably of all time is this Spider-Man annual number 14. This is from 1980. And it's written by Denny O'Neill and drawn by Frank Miller. This is a great comic. One day I'll I'll make a video about this, guys. Yeah, because it's Frank Miller inked by Tom Palmer. I don't think that ever happened before. But Doctor Strange is the co-star in this one. So first we see this ad shrapnel lives and they're the most exciting sound this side of latveria hear the their new single combat love which is the one i just showed you i remember reading this over you know i read comics when i was a kid i'd read comics like every three weeks i'd read the same comic over and over you know oh i'm sorry i realized i have to push this up a little and apparently this drawing it says fmjr so I think it's, I assume that's Frank Miller, John Romita, Jr. I can't think of, uh, of who else JR could be. But it's them uh, cavorting with Spider-Man. And uh, I remember as a kid re-seeing this ad and just be like, what the hell is this? This doesn't make sense. Why is this band in a Marvel comic next to all the ads for Grit? It just, it just was weird. And I guess it was some kind of deal where Denny O'Neill wanted to write, he probably went down to CBGB's one night and saw this band and said, ooh, I want to put them in a comic. So Shrapnel, their shtick was they dress up like soldiers, like army men. And we see them on stage, and I think it is CBGB's. Man, this is nice art, shit. God, I want to just go over this whole comic right now. Hijack the video away from records. And uh, later on, they become a big part of the plot. A Dormammu uses them to lure everyone, brainwashes them by, they're just beating their drum, leading everyone into their doom or something like that. I can't remember exactly. But uh, that's why I wanted to show that off. Not really a cartoonist uh, record cover, but uh, some connection to comics. Okay, we're getting to the CDs now. Now, uh, I'm going to adjust the magnification now. Let's see if I... Did that right a little bit too much yeah, that's probably close enough right hold on a sec yeah it's, that's fine this is a nice double cd of uh they might be giants it includes all their early singles all their b-sides and stuff and also their first two albums and right off the bat, I don't know if you can recognize it, but it's Tony Millionaire of Maki's fame. And I'm just doing a beautiful drawing. On the back, more Tony Millionaire. Showing all these toy boats. And this is, uh, there's even more stuff. So the CDs themselves have these little Tony Millionaire drawings. And more art on the booklet inside. 
And this is like a an overall history of They Might Be Giants. Uh, let me put this here. And inside, though, it's interesting because there's other cartoonists who did the uh, previous records of theirs. Their first album, uh, turns out that the cover was by Rodney Allen Greenblatt. Uh, we saw him last episode doing that Stay Awake cover. He was the guy who's kind of like, he's not really a cartoonist per se as far as publishing cartoons, but he's a, he's a fine artist along the lines of like, a, you know, Basquat or Keith Haring using cartoon imagery in a fine art setting. So pretty nice, pretty cutesy drawing style. And I think there's more. I know there's more. This is amazing. Mark Merrick, I don't know if you guys remember him. He did comics every month in National Lampoon. Uh, he did those New Wave comics, Hercules Amongst the North Americans. Just a kind of like a punk style of drawing. Almost like taking Gary Panter style and just making it a little more codified and just I don't know, coherent maybe, but very like sloppy and ugly, but great. He was a really, I really liked his cartoons as a kid when I used to read National Lampoon all, every month. He was one of the guys I always looked forward to. I think that's it for the cartoonists in this nice CD package. But yeah, if you're a fan of Tony Millionaire, there's some really nice full color art there that's probably never been reprinted. Then we have. This is a Tucson punk rock compilation from uh, Toxic Shock Records. I think that's what they were called. Oh, no, they changed their name to Westworld at this point. So Westworld Records put out this comp of a lot of local Tucson artists and others. Yeah, but it's a dry heat. And they got Jim Blanchard to do this great drawing of Lee Marvin. I'm pretty sure that's Lee Marvin. He's in the desert with all this cactus. But yeah, Jim Blanchard's really good at that. Just doing caricatures of famous actors. That's pretty nice. Oh, this is a weird thing. I I only ha know about this because I know I know the guy who put it out. I've never heard of it. It's so bizarre that uh, this has so many heavy-hitting cartoonists in it. So it's called Colonel Jeffrey Pumpernickel, A Concept Album has all these um, famous artists contributing. So it's almost like a rock opera, but with all these different contributors. Guided by voices, Stephen Malkmus, Anne Magnuson, Hal Gelb of the Minus Five, Poster Children. A lot of bands. And that's the back cover. But while we're looking at this, you can probably already see this booklet. So you probably can't tell because it's so small. But there's that's Adrian Tomine. This guy knows is friends with all these great cartoonists. Peter Bag. Jim Woodring. And these are all things that illustrate this crazy concept album. Joe Sacco. Oh, I'm missing one. Oh, yeah. And Kim Deitch. Look at that. So this is so worth having. I I think I listened to this CD a few times, and it didn't really uh, and it blow me away or anything. But I'm definitely keeping this CD forever. So this uh, conceived, compiled, and constructed by Chris... Slusarenko. He's a local Portland guy. He used to actually be in the Guided by Voices after the original members left. He joined and uh, played with them for a few, uh, quite a while. He also put together that Hedwig tribute album. And uh, with all the crazy contributors, he got like Yoko Ono on it and Cindy Lauper. Just all these great bands um, doing a tribute to Hedwig for charity. So the Ramones Rocket to Russia, photo cover, right? But I used to have the LP of this as a kid, but I sold it when I got the CD. 
But if you remember this album, the original back cover, or I'm sorry, inner sleeve, had all the lyrics to the songs, each one with an illustration by our good friend from Punk Magazine, John Holmstrom. Oh shoot, you can barely see those, huh? I'll try to lift them up, hopefully it won't blur out. So it's just these great little cute John Holmstrom drawings. Lock it, love. I don't care. Sheena is a punk rocker. So there's another comic reference. We're a happy family. Hope you can see these okay. What's not blaring out on you? Teenage lobotomy. So it's just a... Uh, you get the idea. But, um, yeah, I loved this when I was a kid. I, I don't think I knew who John Holmstrom was when I got this album. I didn't really know. I probably did, though, because I had some compilations with him in it. And uh, even those, like, Bananas magazines I get through Scholastic at school would have his work. Oh, he did the back cover, which is nice. You know, Rocket to Russia. And so this is illustrating that. I like this. He has little uh, caricatures of every country. All the kind of stereotypes of, of, of everyone who lives in these foreign lands. So there you have it, Ramones. And we're going to do a little double feature here. Because their next album, Road to Ruin. Which doesn't have a cool insert like that, but he did draw the cover. So that's a John Holmstrom cover of the Ramones. Pretty nice. It's in a more realistic style that he normally draws. He actually tried to draw their faces, you know? So hope you can see that okay. Oh man, I loved this one when I was a kid. I don't know if you guys are familiar with The Point. It was a kind of what, what late 60s, early 70s album, album from Nilsson. And it's a children's record. So he narrates it and then there's a song. And then he narrates more of the story and then there's another song. Uh, the song Me and My Arrow is probably the most famous song from here. You might have heard that. It used to be on a car commercial even. <clears throat> I'm not showing it off because this needlepoint cover. I don't know why this creeped me out as a little kid. Something about this needlepoint cover. Maybe I just thought that no album cover should ever be made in needlepoint. It, was weird. it weirded me out. So this is a nice little CD. But what's really nice about it is... You know, I grew up with the original LP and it had a full color insert of a comic that illustrates the whole story of the point. And unfortunately, because it's a CD, they can only do it at this size, you know, small. But it still looks great to me, this total crazy post-yellow submarine hippie art. And uh, the point uh, tells, the, it's, it's like a little fairy tale. There's this land where everything has a point. Everybody has a point. Every building has a point. Everything. Except for little Oblio. This cute little kid. So his mom makes him a pointed hat so he can fit in better. But there's this asshole, like, Burgermeister, whatever his name was. Or the Count. I think he's called the Count. And he basically says... We must exile him because the law of the land says that everything must have a point. So he goes off on all these crazy adventures. Hope you can see this all right. This art looks even better than when I was a little kid. This is wicked cool cartooning. He meets uh, the pointed man. The pointless forest. I can't remember if he's the pointed man or the pointless man, because he does say a point in every direction is the same as no point at all. Which is a good lesson. He meets the rock man. <laughs> in the album, the guy talks like it, like Wolfman Jack. He's like, hey, kid, how's it going? I'm the rock man. Oh, this stuff's good. So this guy, uh, the name's escaping me. I'm going to find out in a second. And the, the other booklet has his name. For some reason, it's not written here. 
And uh, this guy, I, I looked him up, and I don't think he's ever done a comic other than this. It was, he was a graphic designer, a graphic artist, you know? And he did this as a job. But man, I, I would love if he had some other comic, you know, sequential narrative type work. Because it's so good. Yeah, I'm sorry. His name is Gary Lund. And I couldn't find anything on him other than that he was, you know, a graphic designer. Did a bunch of albums over the years. But unfortunately, never did another comic book. Which makes me very sad. Because uh, he's got the goods, this guy. I wish I still had the album with the booklet. I think I gave it away or something when I got the CD. I shouldn't have. Pretty dumb. Oh, here we got some more Chris Ware. You know, Chris Ware loves his ragtime music, so he did this. I wonder if he did it pro bono. This is more about just the design. Just beautiful, ornate, old-timey design. Beautiful lettering. This is Scott Joplin. It's a complete Scott, Mo sorry, Scott Joplin rags, marches, waltzes, and songs. Beautifully designed. Everything by Chris Ware. God, this tiny lettering he does. It's so nice. And so it's a really nice production. You know, got a little slip case. And then we have, let's see here. This is the first CD, I believe. Nope, the second. Here's the first one. Kind of a variation on the slipcase cover. And it has this nice illustration. The Cascades at the St. Louis World Fair, 1904. Let's get the booklet out. I think there might be some other Chris Ware art in there. The, um, I was looking through this a couple weeks ago. And these booklets are really informative. They're like a great little history book about Scott Joplin. They really got like some scholarly guys to... Yeah, no Chris Ware, just a really good... Good information on Scott Joplin if you're interested. Some of the best liner notes I've ever read. I'm just like, wow, this is like a book. And here's the second one. Different design. Beautiful. We see the Cascades again, but in autumn. And this might have something. No, it doesn't. I was wrong. But I think one of the CDs... Let me see. Oh, yeah. Under the CD case. We see the Cascades, cascades in winter. Some snow... Uh, flowing down, falling down. I like Chris Ware, the way he draws snow. I don't know. I imagine some kind of whiteout fl flicking it at the page. It looks really good. And then... Sorry, I'm just going to throw this back for a second. I want to show you the inside of this one. And we see the Cascades. Looks like summer or spring. And it's so nice. Oh, Chris, we're so good. Let me put this back in the slipcase. And I'll have to do that later. Damn, that's not going in at all. So here's uh, The Clash's 1980 album, Sandinista. Triple album, double CDs. I believe it's 1980. Yeah, 1980. And the thing about this, it came with this insert. I used to have the album as a teenager, but I sold the album when I got the CD. So this was bigger, as you can imagine. But it came with this thing, and it's kind of cool that the CD does this, even though it barely fits. The Armageddon Times, number three. Off to, uh... And it has all these little cartoons by English cartoonist Steve Bell. Even has this one-page comic... Ivan meets G.I. Joe, illustrating the lyrics. Very Gilbert Shelton-ish art from the, this guy. Let me uh, see if I can move it up for you. You can see it a little better. 
very tiny. Because you know this was printed like twice as big on the album. More Steve Bell cartoons. There's some more. And more. Yeah, Steve Bell's always uh, always doing like political satire cartoons, kind of a, you know from a lefty perspective. Perspective, so you know a good perspective. <laughs> oh, look at this nice thing! So ever since uh, our crumb moved to France, he stopped playing with the cheap suit serenaders, and he's he's been playing with these musicians in uh, in France. Les Primitifs du Futur, World Musette. I don't know what this says in French. So this is 1999. Look at this beautiful cover by R. Crumb. It's a. Uh, I don't know if they ever reprinted this. So, you know, it's it's the music's kind of fun. <clears throat> it sounds like music you'd hear in an old movie. And we get some more inside, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this is one of the songs, Kid Choc Chocolate. Beautiful drawing by uh, Chrome. So this might have been a single, and he drew the cover for. Oh, that looks great. Let's see if there's any more art. Maybe not. Maybe that's it. Oh, a nice drawing of the, or, 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 sorry, accordion player Marceau. And there's our crumb playing his little mandolin type instrument. So this is a weird thing. I never heard of them before. I happened to see this and said, well, our crumb, I'm buying it. So uh, there you have it. That's a uh, part two. And probably the last part, we're not going to do any more of these. I ran out of things with cartoonists on the cover. But I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we're going to get back to normal next episode. We'll be uh, doing uh, making videos about the things that really matter in life. Comic books. None of this whatever music bullshit. we got to get back to the, the liveliest of the seven lively arts comic books. And we will. And probably we're never going to stray again. This was a little experiment. It was kind of fun to do from my end. I hope you liked it. Or at least uh, could appreciate it. But um, thanks for watching. And hopefully I'll see you next time here at the Hercules Pedics Academy of Comic Book Studies.